was a uh, uh, Hungarian who uh, in the 1940s, 1948, developed a uh, experiment. He was a physicist whose special area was optics. And uh, this experiment has had profound influence on both uh, people who are interested in consciousness, uh, people interested in imagination, and myself, I'm interested in both, consciousness and imagination, spiritual life, and it's had a profound effect on the field of physics itself. He proposed to do an experiment to replicate uh, the creation of the world as it's described in Genesis. And uh, as you're aware in Genesis it says at the beginning, let there be light. I just use that as a background statement for what I'm about to expound on. So there was that light and sound show that took place at the beginning of Genesis in which light was passed into the what's called the chaos. Chaos uh, went by the name Tovu Bavohu in Hebrew, which has the meaning of that consciousness, but it really, uh, is for our, from our understanding actually, uh, is a force field, an energetic force field of interference patterns, of uh, energy patterns crisscrossing each other. And so it's formless, absolutely formless. So uh, as it appears, what we're looking at is the uh, beaming of light into this formlessness. So what he did was he took a uh, light, a, a laser beam, and he shone it uh, through a specially constructed mirror, which sent two beams off at the same time. One beam went in a horizontal direction and hit a photographic plate. It got registered there as an interference pattern of sine waves was circulating in this photographic plate. That was called the virginal beam. The second beam was called the working beam. This working beam went in, in a, about a 90 degree angle to the first beam and it hit a semi-mirror. Semi-mirror is a mirror that's silver, uh, half silver, half black. The beam was relayed from that silver part to another mirror that was also a semi-mirror, half black, half silver. The beam from that was relayed to an object. So at this point, Gabor is t calling his work, at this in instance, lensless photography. It hits the apple. The beam went from the apple to the photographic plate. And when it, it registered in the photographic plate, it itself registered the beam as an interference pattern of energy field of sine wave movement that interdigitated, interlocked with the other force field of the virginal beam. So now we have a photographic plate, a, a black plate, uh, a, a plate of, if you will, an analogy of consciousness, uh, an emptiness, a blackness that just has circulating energy in it which is not perceptible, certainly, to our sensory awareness. So that's how he set it up. Then he took a laser beam and shone it into the photographic plate. And what appeared in three-dimensional form was the information that was stored in the photographic plate. And the information that was stored was the apple. And the apple appears three-dimensionally in space. Wow. Then he takes the photographic plate and he drops it on the floor. And, he, and the sophisticated part of this experiment, he drops it on the floor and it bursts into many fragments. He picked up a fragment, any one that he just selected it spontaneously, picked it up, shone the laser beam into that fragment, and you know what he saw? The apple registered three-dimensionally in space. Any fragment that he took, that he, in which he shone the light beam into, the apple appeared. So uh, he called this uh, system holography, a, a, uh, a graphic representation of the whole, holography. And what appears was called the hologram. What is, uh, comes out of this understanding is a quite a number of things. One is that the part reflects the whole or the part contains the whole. So that means that the, that the image or any part 
uh, of the of the uh, of the system contains and reflects the wholeness of the system, and that part that contains the wholeness or reflects the wholeness in spiritual terms is us, as it says in the wisdom literature of the uh, the monotheistic tradition. We're born in the image and likeness of the absolute one mind or of God. So we're born as holograms. We are born out of that consciousness force field in which it was said, let there be light. Light enters the force field. There was sound too, I believe. And the light and sound enters into it. And what's emitted and what's asked, what is elicited from that force field is the information it contains. So what was contained in that force field, that, that chaos, in quotes, of that uh, uh, spiritually based understanding was the world. And the world comes into existence and we come into existence in the world as holograms, as extracts of that consciousness. So we come out of that essence as, as beings of existence. And then what it says, <clears throat> that any one element contains all of it. And what that refers to for the work of imagery and imagination is that any one image, <clears throat> if it were to be unraveled, would contain all the information about ourselves. So we are parts that are born containing the whole. We're made in the image and likeness. So we come with all the knowledge in ourselves. You are given access to understanding yourself by being able to turn inward and using an inner light to access this inner consciousness, the darkness of inner consciousness, the formlessness, through the work of the imagination and mental imagery, which is a sense organ of light. So we're sending light into the dark and what comes out of it and what's elicited is the discovered images that contain the story of our existence and the answers to ourselves. So there was quite a, uh, a benefit uh, that has come out of Gabor's experiment that has so much relevance and meaning for how we can use the, uh, and understand the imagery process and what it can do for us. The answers to all the questions are within ourselves and what we have found now is a way to go and find it. And by the way, Gabor won the Nobel Prize for this experiment in 1971. Thank you.